how do you hit big sixes? If you're a player who struggles to clear the infield or you just want to score quick enough to get those big, big scores, then science has the answer for you. In this video, we're going to jump into what the research is saying. Then we're going to take that research and change up your training so you'll be on the way to hitting those big sixes. Now, there isn't much research in terms of cricket specific bat swing velocity, but thankfully due to the profile of your baseball, there's plenty of papers on strength training and then it's there for effect on bat swing velocity. If we look at the research by Ryosuke Haruna and others, they split up a group of players with high, medium and low bat swing velocities and then went on to test their back strength, grip strength and their lean body mass. The research concluded that the players in the higher bat swing velocity had higher back strength, grip strength, and their lean body mass. Based on their findings, they proposed a combination of strength training and batting training to improve one's bat swing velocity. It is all well and good knowing that these factors affect bat swing velocity, but how do you develop these to know you're doing the most to develop your ability to hit boundaries? Firstly, let's look at your back strength. This research specifically looked at lower back strength or your posterior chain. So what exercise can we do to develop this? Um, we're gonna do a good morning. Great for the lower back, glute, your ass, uh, and your hamstring development. Great tool. Um, you can obviously use something obviously a lot as well, like an RDL. And obviously there's other great hamstring development tools like a Nordic kill. I just prefer the good morning um, because again, like, like the other exercises, it's just easy to progress. Um, with a Nordic curl, it gets a bit awkward once you can do a Nordic curl quite comfortably and you get in towards that 8 to 10 rep range, then it's sort of where do you go from there? You're looking, you need to get sort of um, either start like having to hold the player. Movement just gets a bit awkward. With barbell stuff, it's just easy to add two and a half, five kilos or whatever. Great way to progress. Um, probably then, this is my best tool probably for. Uh, creating uh, strength through the posterior chain. I also love the reverse hyper, but not readily available through many gyms at all. So when you're looking to develop strength, make sure your sets are between the one to five rep range and you're moving the concentric part of the movement as fast and explosively as you can. Another factor discussed in our paper was lean body mass. Your lean body mass would be your total body mass minus your body fat. So we're looking here at increasing your muscle mass. Work in the gym is obviously needed for this, but a massive factor of this is your nutrition. So what should you be doing for this? I'll give you two main points on this, which would be the foundations for increasing your weight and muscle mass. Firstly, you need to eat an adequate amount of protein. You can eat all the food you want, but if you're not eating enough protein, you're just gonna get fat. As a ballpark, you're gonna wanna eat two times of your goal body weight in kilos of protein. This is potentially a touch high, but we probably want to go slightly over than we do going slightly under. So what would this look like? If you were to weigh 90 kilos and your goal was to be 100 kilos, then you'd be wanting to eat 200 grams of protein a day. Another thing which comes into it with how much protein you need to eat is the protein sources that you're consuming. Depending on protein sources, you're going to get different rates of what is digested into your body. Let's look at a paper written by Inzaf, Berezaga and others, again, sorry about the name, they specifically look into the lower digestibility of plant-based proteins and the deficiencies in amino acids, which doesn't lend itself well to muscle protein synthesis. This is why we aim a bit higher in terms of our protein goals. And if you are one of those people who solely eat plant-based proteins, you're gonna wanna go maybe slightly higher again to mitigate those deficiencies. I'm not saying that you shouldn't eat a plant-based diet, but due to the increased intake that you're going to need and the richness in fiber from those sources, just be careful out there. You might shit yourself. The second nutrition point is being in a calorie surplus. In simple terms, this is just eating more than what is going out of your body. If your mate is eating 2,000 calories a day and he's increasing in weight and you're eating 4,000 calories a day and your weight isn't going to go anywhere, you're going to have to get over it and eat more food it's inevitable that you will put on weight. You're gonna need these raw materials to put on your size and your muscle mass. It's like if I wanted to build an extension to my house and I hire all these builders to come get all the equipment ready, they turn up on a day ready to go 
and I give them a couple of bricks and a tiny bucket of cement, they're going to look at me like I've got four heads. Same goes when putting on muscle mass. If you want more tips like this, I have an ebook full of them. And I'll put a link to that in the description below. It's completely free. And if you're looking for more tips and different ways to get strong, then go and check out this video.